Welcome back, Sample Pals. My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we saw two ways to do live coding in Chuck, a bad way that I came up with, and an amazing awesome way devised by Chuck's creator. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a UGen we haven't talked about yet, the Lisa UGen. Lisa is a UGen that's meant for live sampling. Its name is a portmanteau of live and sampler, and that's exactly what it does. We're going to talk about how it works, how to use it, how to resample with it, and why you might want to do that. Then we're going to do a quick detour into recording sounds using the ADC UGen. Finally, we're going to explore how to use those things together to make Chuck do some very cool and interesting stuff. So let's start out simple. Here I have a sine oscillator fed into an ADSR, which then goes into a reverb on into the DAC. It sounds like this. It's just a short, impulsive sound that really lets you hear the reverb tail. Side note, look at the way I specified the amount of time. Chuck calls this a duration expression. It's another way you can kind of more concisely specify a duration. So now let's add a Lisa to this system. I'm going to start with the reverb, and then I'm going to make a Lisa object. Now notice that that's a capital L and a capital S, and then that's going to go into the DAC as well. If I save this up and play it, you're not going to hear any difference. There that is again. Uh, that's because uh, we haven't set up the Lisa to do anything yet. So what we, first thing we want to do is we want to allocate some memory to our Lisa. And then we do that by uh, chucking four beats, in this case, to Lisa.duration. And this is like setting the max for a delay buffer. You're just setting up the amount of memory that uh, the Lisa is ex expecting to use. And then we will do a, we'll set it up to record. And the way you do that is you chuck a one to Lisa.record. And then you play, your, you play your sound and then you chuck a zero to Lisa.record, which turns the recorder off. And then you can uh, chuck a one to lisa.play. And then let's go another four beats. Let's listen to that. So it sounded like we played the same thing twice. The second one is actually a recording of the first one that it played back again. Uh, why would you do that? And the reason why is because transposing a recording sounds different than just playing a different thing. So let's, uh, and the Lisa, much like the sound buffer, you can change the rate at which it plays back. So let's send a 0 0.5 to the Lisa dot rate. And listen to how that sounds. So that sounds quite a bit different than just playing that uh, same oscillator at 440 instead of 880, for example. So what I've done here is I've made myself a little while loop after we uh, did our recording of that uh, little click with the reverb. And then let's go to, through this line by line. This first line, what it does is it sets the play position of the Lisa. This play pause thing, you can set it a duration. And if you set that a duration, not a sample number, but a duration that's important, then it will uh, put the playhead for your sample at that moment in the recording. So this is going to set it to the beginning of the recording. And then I've added an uh, array of floats here that are just um, ratios of how fast I want the thing to play back. And then I select those randomly fire that into the Lisa.rate, and then I'm going to send that for a 16th note. And we can hear how that sounds. That sounds kind of cool. And then just for fun, I uh, chucked the Lisa into a, a Stereo pair of delays, added a max for them, and then I put uh, the left, left side one 
to 30 milliseconds, the right side one to 40 milliseconds, just so you get a little bit of stereo action when you hear this thing. And now it sounds like this. I think that sounds pretty nice. So here I've simplified it a little bit so we can see another feature of the Lisa sampler. We're going to record our sound here and, th and then we're going to stop the recording and we're gonna play it. We're gonna go for eight beats instead of four beats. So let's, let's know what that sounds like. Notice that it played it twice. That's because it by default, it loops the recording at the uh, length of your duration. You can turn it off by t uh, chucking a zero into lisa.loop. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you something else, which is you can also chuck a one into lisa.by, and that will turn on bi-directional playback. And what that means is that when it gets to the end of the duration buffer, it's going to reverse the recording and play it backwards. So that's what this sounds like. So here what I've done is I've got a little arpeggio that plays and then I start recording and then I loop through the array of my notes there. I turn off the recording, I make sure the looping is on, I start playback, I start the bi-directional looping playback. And then what I do right here is you can set the beginning and the end of where the loop is looping and you do that by passing in a duration just like you would with the play position. I, this says that I want to start at the beginning of the third beat, and then I want to end at the end of the fourth beat. That's how, that, that's how this works here. And then I will uh, uh, chuck four beats into now, so it's going to be looping this thing, and it's going to be looping it, looping it bidirectionally. Uh, then I just do the whole thing again, up five from from there. So, and you can hear what that sounds like. I called this thing test three dots EK. So you can hear little uh, uh, snaps in there when the thing starts because it's not at a zero crossing when it starts. Uh, if you want to, uh, you can play with, instead of uh, pressing play, you can, uh, there's a, a, a function called ramp up, which let's try that right now. I'll just do a 10 millisecond, or maybe, maybe just a one millisecond ramp up instead of hitting play. And instead of turning it off, I'm going to do a one millisecond ramp down. I don't even know if this is going to fix it. Let's see. That's why you should use functions instead of copying all that code because I uh, I didn't do it in this part. And now I gotta do change my code in more than one place. This is why you should use functions instead of just copying and pasting and copying and pasting, folks. Alright, so that fixes that snapping problem in mine. Uh, but you can hear that was actually the music from the beginning of this episode. Uh, mixed the the two of my things mixed together. Chuck I did call these Chuck Test One and Chuck Test Three. Oh, no, just test three. Oh. All 
I gave them, um, I didn't give them a, a duration. I gave them a number and that's not right. That's an important difference between a Lisa and a sound buff. So you hear how that's all sounding. Uh, it's fun to be able to set the loop points like this. So let's talk about ADC. ADC stands for Audio Digital Converter, and it's the opposite of the DAC, which is the Digital Audio Converter. So whereas the Digital Audio Converter is what takes bits on disk and then sends them to your sound card, this is your, uh, what is going into your sound card being uh, changed into bits. So literally it's what's coming into your microphone that will go into Chuck. So what I've got here, I've got my ADC, which is my default microphone, and then I'm chucking that into an NREV, and then into the DAC, setting the reverb mix, and then uh, just for illustrative purposes, I want to show what happens with that, so I'm also going to print that to a wave. So I'm gonna save this up, in case it's not already, and then we're going to turn this on a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And then if I jump into Audacity, I scroll on this, then we can play that back. Go back to the beginning. C, D, E, F, G, no, I'm not H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, B. So you can see that it's possible to record and it can, it will also go, you can record from your microphone and go into Chuck Effects and then that also can be printed to your file name. So what that means is we can fire an ADC into a Lisa and then use the things that are being recorded at the microphone in real time during a Chuck script performance. So, like I said, I've switched the Lisa to, to be in the uh, analog to digital converter, ADC, rather than getting stuff from the reverb like it did in this script before. And now let's let's try it. Let's see what it sounds like. So what this means is you can have a true hybrid of a live slash electronic performance. I used the Lisa sampler in the most trivial way possible in this example, but it's possible to create a composition where a performer supplies the audio source material for a remix of themselves in real time. It's like a looper pedal, but one where you can create systems of arbitrary complexity. The sky really is the limit with what you could do with this UGen, especially when you pair it with other UGens. In this video, we talked about the live sampling of UGen, Lisa. I'm not totally sure what the next video is going to be about, maybe events? Thanks for watching and leave a comment if you're curious about anything in particular.